iPad apps. Um, maybe it's nice to, do you guys want to see some of our work? And we can talk about um, maybe some of our process. Yeah, because I think that's what we're going to do is sort of break down how we do some of the stuff or approach it. Okay, thanks. Um, so, okay. jump into this. So, this is, um, we just finished doing this piece, which is sort of a, taking a, a car physics engine called Mad Car 3, and, um, which is what they use for like testing how a car is going to behave on different terrains, and then kind of reskinning that system and building artwork from it. And the concept of the artwork is what happens um, to digital content in the afterlife when all of humanity is destroyed, and the afterlife is encompassed by all of these digital personas. About, like a destination for your your soul or your avatar avatar after 2012 and if like you know um, if you could afford it maybe you're, you could uh, after everyone else is dead you could the final destination could be this digital kind of video game environment where maybe you could somehow preserve the souls. It's just a concept because there's a I guess there's a lot of hype around 2012 that we're really interested in kind of exploring that as artists. This is um, something we, as part of the production of what we do, we actually, we're very hands-on, so we're sitting kind of making, experimenting with different um, aesthetics all the time, coming up with like, I guess, combining all these different like 3D and illustration and photography and film, trying to mesh, mesh it all together. Yeah, and actually, um, you can show the projection mapping stuff as well. It's in process. Do you want to lead up to that? Yeah. You can show uh, a Yeah. We'll, show, we'll first show you like a few of like the polished projects and then just go into more of the experimentation and sort of the weirder stuff. They're online too, so you can check the website. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, you saw this presentation before, didn't you? In the, we oh, okay, were you guys? No one is there. Okay, that's good. Then we're not being repetitive. <laughs> um, but this is a, a sculpture that we made for Diesel, and basically the idea is you'd walk up to a storefront and you could do some kind of throwing gesture, and you could throw light and electricity across the surface of a sculpture and then onto a big LED wall on the back. And so, really, it was like <clears throat> to do this kind of works with most of our projects where we're making these experiments first and then brands just buy it like we're not really producing a specific piece of content it's not like diesel was like asking us to make this you know we just were playing around with this kind of approach and um convince them to do it and so in that sense like we you, you approach the brands or do they approach you it kind of works both ways a lot of times um we'll just have contacts and we'll just be like hey we're working on some stuff are you interested in meeting up and we do get blank called sometimes but in that sense, like, we have more control if we make something and go to the brand and be like, we've made this already, are you interested in participating? If they call us, they're going to be kind of asking for a specific production, so, kind of. And then, yeah, just extending it into dressing rooms where you can do um, head replacement apps and... And then also, we do, um, not everything's interactive, but we'll uh, just generate these fashion spots that kind of utilize technology in a weird way, whether it's like using color psychology to kind of induce lucid hallucinations a little bit, which is sort of what we were trying to go for on this. And So we were asked to make an interactive music video for Gazelle Twin, and so what we did is we made um, an eyeball interface, and the idea is that you take 
two laptops and or two computer screens and set them up next to each other, then you make two sets of eyes and then you can place it on a couch or place it on a wall. So you're taking a website and bringing it into a, like a physical space so that it becomes sort of a caricature of that of that land. So yeah, like kind of like that is sort of the mock up of it. And then also like experimenting with different ways of making music and um, this is making augmented reality instruments. So basically you print out these two PT codes and then you set them in front of your camera and then basically it puts this oscillating color crystal in between the two points and then you change the frequency by shifting them closer or further apart. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's better. Or even our website. We just open. So we have, if you go to champagnevalentine.com, we put out um, more finished projects on there, but we have a Vimeo site that we're constantly putting up more of our daily kind of experiments. This is an iPhone app prototype, prototype that uh, we're still finishing, but it's um, the idea of basically creating this um, cinematic experience using the iPhone and the GPS coordinates. So what we're doing is looking at different spaces like botanical gardens or uh, like physical locations that have an interesting story about them or that we like to um, put a story in that space. So in this instance, this is a version that we did in Sydney. And we created this kind of fairy tale that was based in some historical events. That when you walk around the garden, um, um, you basically have ten different points you ha that you have to go to in an order, and you get these little like mini films. So it's like a one-minute film per spot, and it only launches when you're in a particular location. We do that with a push message. message. This is a GPS um, and it's an engine. What is the engine based in? We're developing it ourselves, but yeah, it's based on. No, it's uh, done in C or open frameworks actually, yeah. and then just using the GPS mm -hmm. data that's dropped in and then pulling up whatever content is associated with that. So right now it's just set up for launching videos that loop on the GPS spots, but um, we're also thinking about doing stuff like. Um, but you, have to, you need the app to be running in the background. Yeah, you have to have the app open as a separate thing. And, um, and then we're also thinking about doing like sort of sound history. So you could walk around a city on a specific date, listening to a soundtrack, listening to multiple different you know, pieces of music. And then a year later, you could play your playlist from your locative walking experience from the year before. And then you could trigger the memories of your experience at that point and thinking about what other uses there there is with that technology, and you know, and it's also good for doing city guides. It's more of a commercial use for it, or you know, having some like rich narrative-driven experiences of the history, or like doing ghost tours in a locative way, and thinking about other uses with that. And, yeah. and we're about to go to Australia in a few weeks to create a, another version of this in a national park um, south of Melbourne. And we're going to be working on the site for a few weeks, exploring the history of the space and coming up with like a whole new, I guess, app version of that Ghost Guard project. Yeah. What? Okay. We could show, um, where is the placebo? Yeah. Hmm, this is an interactive music video that we created um, for, the, for the band Placebo. And we're really interested in kind of getting people um, actively involved and engaging in online content or, like, or, or things like music videos that I guess you don't generally associate with interactivity. So this is all built in Flash and the idea is that you, it pushes you along the timeline and the story but you can, there's a little bit of gameplay and it's just enough to kind of engage you but still um, very visual. Yeah, in this case, like the bird follows your mouse and reacts to it. And so, I mean, I guess 
we can keep going through a few experiments, but it's also good to kind of gauge where you guys are at and open up a bit of a discussion about how to move forward. No. Unless you guys just want us to entertain you like for 45 minutes, we could do that as well. <laughs> well, if you're experimenting, like for diesel, and you have something, aren't you afraid of that diesel will say, well, no, that's not what we're interested in? And then you have your whole experience. I mean, I think it's, we also don't spend a lot of money to do an experiment, like we know how to at least do a lot of animation work and come up with ideas conceptually and write them out in a very clear way, and so we're not like having to like spend external costs to come up with these ideas or like build a whole entire laboratory and start it on fire and be like, this is our yeah. fire experiment, you know, it's like, the stuff that we're doing is, you know, within our own means, and then if we go into a real production, then we have to you know, rent screens, rent technology, have programmers help us out and work in that zone. So the experiment is mostly conceptual? Yeah, we could show you actually, like, um, what we're doing right now is we're trying to do um, projection mapping on still lifes, like a classical florally still lifes, mm -hmm. and um, we could show you the process of how that works. Yeah. Um, have to pull it up, so just give me a second. Do you find it difficult to make something like really interactive because um, like the placebo uh, video that is yeah it doesn't really react on what the uh, viewer is doing yeah, there's not really communication it's more like a reactive you yeah thoughts on that? it's just enough it's not really a game that placebo interactive music videos there's, there's just enough interaction that the experience is aware of you as a mm -hmm. user and it just keeps you engaged in the fantasy a little bit more yeah. as opposed to just sitting on a couch you know eating pickles and it's like, like a casual interactivity i think like it's not not claiming for that to be like a, a deeply interactive experience obviously there's a lot more interactive pieces but it's like the idea of um it's kind of like a the equivalent of a casual game or something, you know, it's not like you're not putting much effort into it. I think we do that because we're not like, we like that kind of work as well. It's something that it's part passive and part um, active viewing. I think that comes from, the, I, I really love video games, but I've always been a really bad at video games, so I always end up watching people that are good at video games and kind of enjoying that process more than playing myself. Okay. I think it has something to do with how we design stuff a little bit, so from that perspective. Yeah. Like being passionate about gameplay but kind of creating this a little bit of an alternative. We can also show some of our game stuff. Yeah, and the Tate stuff is kind of like gameplay a little bit like Yeah. We built this this oh. we built this uh, yeah. this Very website fun. for the Tate model. <laughs> And the idea was to, we got briefed by the Tate Modern, they had an installation in the Turbine Hall, which is a massive, gigantic shipping container, that when you walked inside, all it was was complete darkness. And we were lucky enough to work with the artist, um, Miroslav Balkan, who's a Polish artist, to, um, to kind of create an online version of the art piece, really, to kind of tease people to come down and see the art piece, but also people that went or couldn't come to London to get a sense of what that artwork is about. And so we, we spent a lot of time with him and, and figuring out his inspiration. He had a list of notes on one piece of paper that listed out all his different inspirations. As you can see this, and this acted as the interface, the inspiration for the interface in the end. So um, we decided to recreate the space in a sense like this disorientating maze filled with his kind of inspiration. And so it's a very, um, it's a really good experience on headphones. Um, you can just kind of cruise around and experience his videos and sounds. And, um, Again, I think that's the kind of work we like creating something that doesn't quite fit the category of website, game, music video. It's like meshing everything together and things Kinds of, we're drawing from all the all of those different things to create things like this. I'm not sure if it's just being a website or just being a game. Or, yeah. This is um, I guess like the real of some of the art stuff, which is good. 
like this is some of the more like just sort of fine art that we approach as opposed to the commercial stuff like thinking about these video game mods or these installations or you know this 3D tweaks and hacks. That one's quite dark. Yeah. How do you work together as a duo? Does one person come up with the visuals and the other one does the technology stuff, or how does that work? It's really interesting and like uh, crazy when you're working together. It's very um, falls into place somehow, we, and we have most of the time we have no idea how. But generally, um, Jeff is more on the, I guess, experimental visual side, and I'm more on the conceptual writing and visual side. So, yeah, I'm like spending time trying to like make sense of it all. <laughs> and then Jeff is sitting there making something amazing and beautiful. But then we switch it up. So, okay. Yeah just layer what each other's doing at the same time on top of each other and it works. Yeah, sometimes we work in Photoshop and it's literally like a Photoshop file, like 200 layers and like, then he oh gives it to me and then I'm like adding layers and like turning on and off layers and that's, and then we end up with a final PSD and that's like a good, like a good, Mood. I guess, demo how we work in general. Different layers, turning layers on and off. Okay, and then so we we'll go over like what we're working on now, which is like here's a sketch of kind of um, what we're trying to make is um, just make these surrealistic sort of flower still lifes, and then figured out that if we do um, a drawing like this and animate that drawing and project it on top of a real life still life, then we end up getting. Um, Thing like what? like sort of and this is just an early prototype of it it's very difficult to projection map on such an organic surface but then we're just trying to see where that can go with doing it on flowers and, which in the end hopefully it'll be much better but I don't know, maybe there's someone here who has a better projection mapping technique. Well, I but know someone who uh, does structured light scanning, so he makes pictures, and he makes a little, uh, I don't know its name again, the map of uh, where every pixel is lying. Uh, he makes a picture, and uh, he does it with lines and stripes, and uh, then he knows uh, which pixel was on which place. His name is Aldo Ruben, maybe he has Oh, really? And so you do that for projection mapping, so you're able to take a photo and then it can tell you where that pixel yeah. really is. What's it called? Aldo Ruben is his name. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can you write it? Yeah. <laughs> Aldo I Ruben? Here in the beginning of December, there's these festivals from uh, Fuimo and Born Digital, and they gave um, lectures and stuff about mapping, and they also do a lot of this stuff because I'm also busy with this stuff. Do you um, know uh, Mad He's Mapper? Also, uh, Mad Mapper? Yeah, Mad Mapper I know, but it's for or oh. super organic shapes, it becomes really difficult. Yeah, you need, probably you need like that. Uh, we work together with a lot of projects. Oh, that's cool. Is Sweet. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what do you guys want to, I mean, I guess we could continue talking about specific things like projection mapping or just open it up in general to what is appealing to you guys. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we could show us some more experiments. Like we started, um, thinking about like old Bugs Bunny cartoons and how to remix those cartoons and um, so we started bringing them into 3D Studio Max and doing fluid simulations based around Bugs Bunny's movements and uh... oops, that's the wrong one yes. yeah so this is um... just taking the cell animation and then mixing it with Phoenix FD.
And we actually got permission to create this for Bugs Bunny's birthday. <laughs> and then the um, the website, well, the company that commissioned us, like pulled out at the last minute because they couldn't get in touch with Warner Brothers, and they were worried that we couldn't actually pack this. So. They weren't sure, but we're still actually trying to get in touch with Warner Brothers to, to do this project, to finish it. When is Bugs Bunny's birthday? It was first, I think it was like in August, wasn't it? And how it old like is Bugs first, Bunny? Yeah. He was no idea. 70, 75, I think. Wow. He's really old. Respectable age. Old man, yeah. <laughs> Again, this is, um, we did, um, we laser cut some wooden panels and then uh, built mechanical rigs for them to make um, kind of like a, a new shadow puppet system. And this is at the Cat Museum in Amsterdam. And so we just, yeah, come up and see this like creepy, creepy shadow puppet. And the thing is like the, the motor on these cats like sounded like cats meowing anyway. So it's like, <laughs> 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 it did. So like the sound design was done by the motors for us. It seems like a really auto, uh, auto approach to things you made. But on the other side, and the other side, the commercial view of them, because you Yeah, I mean, there's. I mean, we kind of have always gotten away with doing whatever we wanted for brands. You know, because we don't, like, people don't come to us wanting, like, a specific production method. I mean, there's a million people you can go to if you want, like, a film noir animation style that's interactive on the iPad. I mean, there's, they kind of come to, like, we're selling our art for brands, basically. Yeah. It's really a trend. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that like, um, I mean, I think there's a sort of specific aesthetic that we do, which is sort of this um, almost like 1980s electro like uh, video drone looking stuff that we kind of play with. And so I think that like a lot of our projects come from that aesthetic or like this sort of digital surrealism stuff. And so, you know, we've been doing that for a long time. So we have a lot of personal work along those lines and commercial work attached to that. So. I guess we're kind of known for that aesthetic by some people and um, and then also just yeah reacting to technology in an interesting way of um, it might be full of flaws and lots of mistakes or something but at least we're trying to like reinvent it in a new way and so that's why sometimes our websites look kind of crazy or not perfectly polished but there's a sense of humanity to it I guess like it's almost um, like a painter doing a realistic renaissance painting, but then scaled the hand up a little bit too big on the top. Yeah. 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 It's true that it's... Uh, it's up. Wow, I can't hear anything. <laughs> It means that right. the half hour is that is already the end of round number five, and we're about to oh, start with yeah. round number six, which is of a slightly okay. different okay. nature. Yeah, in the right. sense that you not all the tables with are already you just go to our website and That means our that you can either continue Facebook where you are, or yeah, just that's the Facebook. website there. Um, or maybe put our Facebook yes. address. If well. you have something. If you want or Facebook.com slash something that connects to a theme of a table that you've seen yeah, if you want to see and that you think is really worthwhile to show, think, like, just plug in. Yeah. Um, or what we have in round number six are the following people at the festival. The Maybe it's interesting for you guys. Bruce yeah, Shirley, that would be great. fiction author, yeah. will want to discuss a uh, theory he has and about what exactly.